this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial we're going to take a look at animating colours. Um, the reason that I want to do this here is because at the moment we've got a nice block of purple on our screen and um, we've put together all the essential elements uh, for rapidly updating the screen. We've got a loop that, that can do that. And it's, uh, I, I want to change the colours of the pixels as we go along. So we're going to end up with um, some particles kind of bouncing around the screen, which are going to slowly change colour. But it's a lot easier to, um, to see the colour of an entire block than it is of an individual pixel. So for that reason, I thought while well, we've got a block of colour on the screen, let's take a look at um, sorting out the, the colour change that we're ultimately going to apply to our particles. So at the moment we've got a purple screen with a single white pixel right in the center there, if you can see it. Uh, so I'm gonna get rid of that white pixel, delete that, and um, I'm gonna work on changing these colors that we, we fill the entire screen with. So to do this, um, let's, let's pick one color to start with. Let's maybe animate, um, let's say green. So let's, let's set green to 255 and set the red and blue to zero for the moment and just check that that looks okay. And what I, what I actually want to do is um, change the colors smoothly. Now, the, the, the ideal thing to do here would be to look up an algorithm for mapping RGB, red, green, blue colors, to something like HSL, hue, saturation, lightness. The hue is um, the particular shade of color, red or green or whatever. And if, if we had an algorithm that could um, take a number and turn it into a hue, we can cycle through all possible hues and see all the colors of the rainbow. But since that algorithm will be quite long and involved, I'm going to take a shortcut here. I'm going to animate um, all three colors. I'm going to make them smoothly uh, wax and wane, like grow and fade. And I'm going to make them all three colors do that um, out of synchronization with each other so that we end up with a range of different combinations. So to start with, the, the challenge is just to smoothly animate one color, make it uh, wax and wane, make it um, gradually increase to maximum intensity and then slowly decrease to minimum and to cycle through that. So to do that, I'm going to use a trigonometric function. I'm going to use sine. Uh, so to use the sine function, you need to include math.h up here, which is maybe already included in STL, but I'll include it explicitly. It's possible that this might just be called math on your system. Uh, on mine, it's math.h. A lot of these .h suffixes were dropped from standard um, headers, like iStream, for example. There's still header files, but the .h suffix was, um, was dropped to make it look nicer, basically, at some point. Uh, you might need to include using namespace standard as well to use um, functions from math.h. Now, sine, um, I'm not going to get into the, the details of trigonometry, but we can think of sine as a function which takes a number and um, it maps that number. In other words, it returns a number in the range minus 1 to plus 1. So if we supply sine with an ever-increasing number, it will return to us a value in a range minus 1 to plus 1, and a value that it returns as we increase the argument that we supply to it will smoothly bounce up and down between minus 1 and plus 1, so there are no abrupt changes there. So what, what we want is to supply sine with some value that increases as the program um, continues to run. And to do that, we can use uh, a function called sdl underscore get ticks. And this returns the number of milliseconds since the program started. So let's say um, int uh, elapsed equals sdl get ticks. And I'm going to supply that value to my sine function. And sine is going to return a value Let's call this green. 
between minus 1 and plus 1. So we could just output that um, for the moment just to see what it looks like. So if I, if I run this now and then just let it run for a bit and then quit it, in the console here, oh yes, we're seeing zeros because I forgot, of course, that the return value is a double. It's no use using an int there. Let's try this again. So um, I'll run this, let it run for a bit, quit it, and then we can see that every time the loop's executed, we've supplied um, a, an increased value to sign the number of milliseconds since the program started running. And sign has returned here a value in the range of minus one to plus one, which it's not easy to see here because quite a lot of milliseconds are passing in between each iteration of this loop but um, it does actually range smoothly between minus one and plus one. It changes gradually. Maybe we can see, um, maybe we can slow down the change if we multiply elapsed by some um, small number here. Because here we're, we're jumping quite a lot, like from minus 0 0.9 up, all the way up to 0 0.3, which is not a smooth change, because, um, because we're supplying a much bigger value to sign um, from one iteration of the loop to the next. So a lot of milliseconds passes between one iteration of this loop and the next iteration. Let's multiply elapsed by some small number like 0.001 and see what we've got then, see if the return value is appearing to change any smoother. So this looks a lot better. Now we can see, we can see that it is a smooth change We've got 0 .0, 0 0.95, then 0 0.95, well it's 0 0.95, 0 0.96 basically here, yeah. 0 0.95, 0 0.94, 0 0.93, 9, 0.935. So you see this, this value is smoothly changing it and it will bounce up and down between um, that minimum and maximum value, minus one and plus one. What we want it to do is bounce up and down between the minimum and maximum possible values of green which will be 0 and 255 in decimal. So first of all, if we add 1 to sign, that will give us a value in the range 0 to 2. Let's, let's run this again. Quit it and take a look. So now our values range from 0 all the way up to 2. We haven't got many values here, um, but it, it will in fact range from 0 up to 2. Now, if we take that and multiply it by half of the maximum value that we want it to reach, um, half of we can't well half of um, half of two hundred and fifty-five, I guess, would be one hundred and twenty-seven point five. But let's let's maybe multiply it by one two eight and see what that looks like. So, if I run this, just sort of leave it for a bit and then quit and take a look. So now, hopefully the maximum value of this will be um, 255 point something. So to actually get the value 2.0 from sine, we'd have to supply it with exactly two, uh, exactly, uh, well for sine, it will be exactly um, pi over two, I think that's right, um, or um, three times pi divided by two, uh, if I remember my trigonometry correctly here. Yeah. Sine of 90 degrees is 1, so therefore um, I think I'm right in saying that, well, we, we, could, we could try that actually. We could use, um, we could supply this with math dot, um, actually I think there's a constant in math called m underscore pi, divide, and let's divide that by 2, see if that runs. I'm not sure if I remember this correctly. So now if we look at that, yeah, we get 256. But um, if we're supplying this not with exactly pi over 2, pi is 3.1141592, etc. If we don't supply it with exactly pi ever, then um, we're, we're not going to get exactly, um, it's not going to return exactly 1 ever. So it's always going to be some number that's slightly less than one. So for that reason, I think this would never give us quite uh, 256. It would always give us 255 
point something. We don't want it to be 256 because that's outside the maximum range of green. Uh, so let, let's, let's maybe try, um, we could try running it for a bit and getting the maximum value of green here just to see what it is. Let's change green now to an int so we can discard the, um, we can discard the, like the numbers after the decimal point here. And let's declare a variable here, max, which I'll set equal to a low number like zero. And let's say inside the loop, if green is greater than max, then max equals green. Uh, with, a, with an if statement, you usually use brackets, but if you've only got one line that you want to execute after the if, you can omit the brackets. But a common source of error, errors is to omit the brackets in if, and then to imagine that stuff after, after the if statement will also be included within the within the um, the code block of the if statement. But an if without brackets, without the curly brackets, will only apply to the next line. So for that reason, I, I usually put the brackets in. But let's just try this temporarily. And at the end, let's say after the loop finishes, let's say C out max and max. So this. I wanted to show you this because this is a really handy thing to do. To get a, you can get a minimum value in a similar way as well of a variable. If you're doing animation, often you want to know what the minimum and maximum values of some number are. So let's leave it just for a little while and then quit it and take a look. So the maximum value is 255. What I'm going to do is, as an extra kind of bit of security here, let's, let's remove this max thing and I'll remove the output of green and we'll remove this and this is um, I'm going to store the green in an unsigned char so if this did happen to return 256 then um, it would simply uh, map to some number uh, within the range not to 255 because that's all an unsigned char can store you would see like a sudden jump in the color which doesn't matter too much for this program. It's not like we're animating a figure on the screen with this. So I, I think that's all right. But if you do see, if we do see sudden jumps in our color, then we might suspect that somehow we've supplied a value to sign here that actually is um, causing it to produce the maximum possible value of 256. And then maybe we'd want to make this 120. 7.5 or something just to ensure that can't happen, but I, th I think this is probably all right Now let's supply green um, in here and, and by the way um, C++ doesn't seem to care if I um, that It doesn't care about the fact that I've got a double here and an unsigned char here It just puts the value into the unsigned char uh, Whatever part of it fits which should be all of it in this case um, and discards the stuff after the decimal point. But if you want to make it clear that you're doing um, a cast, you can um, put in in, bra in brackets before the value here, and I'll surround the whole thing with brackets as well, unsigned char, just to make it clear what you're doing here. Now let's run this and see how it looks. Now I suspect on your video, this might look quite rubbish because the video may not reproduce um, colors very accurately, but I, I can see here on my computer that we're getting a really nice, very smooth change, um, as, as smooth as you can with 256 possible values, from black all the way up to maximum green intensity and then down again and then up again, sort of looks like it's breathing. It's a little bit fast though, so I'm going to um, change this a little bit, put an extra naught in there, and then let's take another look at it. Let's run this. There we go. Now it's changing very, very slowly, quite slowly, from black up to maximum green, then down slowly again to black and then up again and so on. Uh, so that, that's why I, I use the sign function because it, it can produce this nice, smooth looking sort of change. Um, at times, at the moment, I can barely discern it changing, but if I watch for a bit longer, I can see that it is in fact changing. It might be too slow, but I'll, I'll see. Let's change now. Let's let's change red and green in the same way. So I'm going to copy this, paste, um, couple in, and let's have a red and a yeah, sorry, red and blue. 
let's have a red and blue. And um, I'd like these colours to change. I want to combine them all, but I want them to change at different rates. Uh, so let's let's change this constant here. Let's have this 0, 0, 0, 2 and this 0, 0, 0, 3 just to make them change out of synchronization so that when we combine them, we should get various hues of the different colours. And I'm going to put red in here and blue in here. And let's run that and see how that looks. Should be interesting. So now it's sort of grey, purplish. Again, probably looks a bit rubbish on your video. But here, well, it's sort of pink and now it's sort of yellowish. Now we're going through to full yellow. Now green and um, sort of, yeah, it's really sort of darkish green. Now it's getting a bit blue. I think that looks quite nice, um, except that I'm not wild about this pink colour at the beginning. Maybe it's all right. Well, we could try and see how it looks. You could also use a cosine function, which is exactly the same, except that um, cosine will start for a value of zero. It starts at um, its maximum value of one. I'm just curious how that would affect it. Now it starts up with a sort of greenish colour. That's maybe well. Um, you could play around this with this indefinitely, really. Uh, so I'll leave you to that to investigate that as you wish. I think that I think the sign there wasn't wasn't bad. Let's stick with that. See how that looks. So now we've got a nice color changing algorithm, and I'm ultimately going to apply that to um, animated. Uh, particles that are going to bounce around my screen. But I'll leave it there for this tutorial. So as always, I'd recommend having a go at that for yourself and get it working. And um, the great thing about this is now we're starting to get into territory where it sort of encourages you to play around with it, encourages you to um, to try different values in here, try, um, you know, try cosine if you like. Um, and you can get creative and anything that springs to mind, any way that you can think of to change the colours that might be interesting, you can try them. And um, it's well worth having a play around with this and uh, seeing what results you can get. So um, in the next tutorial, I'm not sure what we'll do. Possibly we'll start looking at particles um, because we've got to get around to that soon. So until next time, happy coding. <laughs>